from the South Point studio. Whoa! <laughs> The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. It's a comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. A real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> 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 Do I look at the clock? I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines, live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, especially a Adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, all righty, all righty. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program coming to you live and direct from the South Point Studios at the South Point Hotel Casino Complex on Las Vegas Boulevard in your gaming capital of the world. And just look at it, the book. We've got like almost three hours before the first game tips off on day three of March Madness, and it's already starting to fill up, and it's going to fill up a whole lot more before the day is out. Day three of the first big weekend of March Madness here. They call it March Mayhem. Of course, the big ballroom, uh, the, the uh, exhibit hall will be open upstairs. There's thousands of people up there in the last couple of days. We're whittling down the first weekend now. So there's not as many games as there are for the next two days, but still very exciting. We'll have more about that with Rich Ang when he comes in a bit little, little uh, later on with, of course, uh, his selections for the NCAA tournament today. We welcome you to the show. We come to you, as I said, live and direct from this gaming capital. And if you haven't tried us out, you got to do it. Go to YouTube, then punch in South Point Studios. You get to the South Point Studios uh, streaming network, and you can see and hear us uh, right there uh, at the uh, South Point uh, position on YouTube. And if you're coming for the first time, do us a favor and subscribe. All right? It's free. Doesn't matter. It's free. So just subscribe. Love to have you as part of our team here on the race day show. And for those of you uh, hustling around Las Vegas, Nevada, 
Well, you know, we're there on the radio. Uh, our anchor station here in Las Vegas is Sports Talk 1400 AM and 107.1 FM. And then all of you around the world, you got us through the streaming at racedaylasvegas.com.vegas.world.global. I got all the dots. And, uh, of course, on your uh, devices, your iPhones, Androids, you get the KSHP uh, app. You put it on your Android or your uh, iPhone that you can hear us on there. And, of course, if you have the YouTube uh, app, then you can hear us and see us on your devices as well. And then anywhere you get your podcasting, hey, we're there as well. So welcome to the show, however, wherever, whenever you get us. Well, the weather is the key thing today, certainly for horse racing. We have two races today that have 100 points for the leaderboard for the Kentucky Derby. So uh, I can tell you right now, the winners of these two races today will go right to the top of the leaderboard as far as the Kentucky Derby uh, points are, because right now the leader has 66 points. That's Timberlake. Doorknock is sitting there with 60 as well as uh, domestic product. And then Sierra Leone sits there at 55 and Track Phantom at 55. So you see that the top horses uh, in the leaderboard right now are going to be knocked off because uh, 100 points is up for grabs in both the uh, Louisiana Derby and the Jeff Ruby Stakes today. Uh, One at, uh, of course, Turfway Park, the Jeff Ruby, and, of course, uh, the uh, Louisiana Derby on a big day of racing out at the fairgrounds. So that's going to change. And, by the way, There are two races today that have Kentucky Oaks leaderboard points up for grabs. Uh, At uh, the fairgrounds, you have the uh, fairgrounds Oaks. That's 100 points, and that'll knock off Jody's Pride, who's at the top of the list right now with 65 points. Then you have Fiona's Magic, and uh, uh, at 60, you got Lemon Muffin at 50. You got Tarifa at 50 as well. So you can see that uh, there's going to be a change in the leaderboard as well, especially if Tarifa wins today, adding to that 50 points. Another 100 points there. So the leaderboard in both the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Oaks is going to be shaken up today. Winners of these races today will go right to the leaderboard for the points, the qualifying points for the Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby today. Now the weather. All right, you remember yesterday, early in the morning, John uh, Jonathan Hardoon texted me a, uh, a shot of the racetrack at the fairgrounds, and it was a sloppy, muddy mess. And we thought, uh-oh. You know, all those great races happening today at the fairgrounds. Eight stakes races on the card today at the fairgrounds. That, of course, will be highlighted by the Louisiana Derby and the fairgrounds Oaks. But as the day went through yesterday, that front that went through that made a mess of the racetrack before started drying out throughout the afternoon. Now we get the latest report from Manolins, where the fairgrounds is at. And it looks like it's going to be great weather there at uh, New Orleans at the fairgrounds today. And it looks like they're going to get uh, most of the moisture. I, the track should be very close to fast. We'll wait about the turf course. Turf course might be a little off yet, but it looks like there's going to be great racing there today with all the races set on the particular surfaces that are they are set on. We have no changes up to this time at the fairgrounds for their big day. And, of course, Turfway Park, hey, it's on synthetic racetrack, so it doesn't matter. But uh, just for your FYI, Turfway Park, Uh, The weather is great there in the Cincinnati area where Turfway Park is at as well. So we're going to have great racing today, both at Turfway with six stakes races, highlighted by the Jeff Ruby and the Bourbonnet Oaks, and, of course, the big racing day at the fairgrounds. Taking a look at, uh, by the way, I I got to tell, when I get to uh, Jonathan Hardin, I got to tell this. I I did some research. Nine, nine fillies who won the fairgrounds Oaks went on to win the Kentucky Oaks recently. So the Fairgrounds Oaks could be a pivotal race today for the Kentucky Oaks. A lot of winners out of the Fairgrounds Oaks went on to win the Kentucky Oaks. We'll wait and see about that. Looking ahead to next weekend, because next weekend, another blockbuster for Kentucky Derby and Oaks points. Of course, the Dubai World Cup will start early in the day, you know, a half a world away at Maydan Race Course in Dubai with the big Dubai World Cup day. The UAE Derby, the United Arab Emirates Derby, the Arkansas Derby at Oaklawn Park and the Florida Derby at Gulfstream Park all will hold another 100 points in the leaderboard for the Kentucky Derby. So things are going to be shaken up in the next week, week and a half, two weeks. And, of course, uh, uh, there'll be uh, plenty of uh, Oaks points as well. Uh, that's for sure. Now, got to remind everybody here, we're going to have the big Kentucky Derby party here in the big ballroom upstairs. You know the deal. We start out on uh, Thursday. 
the 2nd of uh, May, the first uh, week in May. On Thursday, we're going to do a special Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks show right here where you're seeing us now on the South Point Studios Network, only on the South Point Studios Network. You won't be able to get us on anything but the YouTube app and uh, here at the uh, South Point Studios Network on YouTube. We won't be doing it over the the other uh, outlets that we have. That is a special show on Thursday night, about 5 o'clock in the evening, I think, right here exclusively, the day before the Kentucky Oaks. I'm going to go over the t- Kentucky Oaks card uh, primarily there, and then don't forget the Kentucky Derby seminar held here live in the Grand View Lounge will happen on Kentucky Oaks Day, that Friday, the day after Friday, May 3rd. As soon as the Kentucky Oaks card is over and the racing in Southern California is over, We'll start our seminar in the uh, Grandview Lounge at 6 o'clock with the handicapper Jonathan Hardoon coming in from New York and, of course, John Lindo coming in from Southern California, and I'll be in between those two refereeing the whole situation. It's the Kentucky Derby Seminar, our annual Kentucky Derby Seminar here at the South Point at the Grandview Lounge on Friday the 3rd. And then on Kentucky Derby Day, Saturday the 4th, We move upstairs to the big grand ballroom. We'll have the giant TV sets, all a bunch of other TV sets for all the other racing going on on the day. Big banquet tables, a lot of seats around the banquet tables, plenty of betting windows, and, of course, the food and beverage, uh, you know, uh, discount prices. So you come on out and bring your friends and enjoy it. And here's the kicker. It's all free. Everything I just told you is free from the time you park your car out here in the parking lot. They don't charge the park and everything else as well. So we want to invite you to come on and join us for the Kentucky Derby celebration, the 150th Kentucky Derby right here at the South Point. All right, a couple of news items for the upcoming uh, races next weekend. Uh, It seems that Bob Baffert, as you know, his horses won't qualify for Derby points even if they win the race, and we all know that story. We've talked about that enough. But Bob Baffert's Muth is headed for the Arkansas Derby at Oakland Park. Uh, and uh, he worked 112.25 seconds uh, over the uh, Santa Anita yesterday. Maymun uh, will go to the Santa Anita Derby. That's also Bob Baffert's horse. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll wait and see about that. And Victory Avenue, a very impressive horse in his uh, debut. Uh, has, has dis- their connections decided to skip the Florida Derby. They're going to give him more time to mature and grow, and I think that is the right thing for that horse as well. All right, we got a lot to cover on this show, so uh, don't forget we got Jonathan Ardoon. He's coming up next. We're going to go over the two Derby prep races, the two Oaks uh, uh, prep races, and of course, uh, as well as some picks from Jonathan. Uh, as far as yesterday is concerned, um, we had uh, Isaac uh, Castillo win three races at Aqueduct. He won uh, the last race to get his third race of the day. Uh, pick six, 12 grand and change there. Santa Anita. Jerry Jackowitz comes with a winner in the sixth race with Big Novel. Big Novel was bet down as the favorite under leading jockey Juan Hernandez and paid $4.20. And uh, Rich Singh's horse finished second in the eighth race there uh, at Santa Anita. And, uh, of course, at Gulfstream Park, Edgar Zayas won three races on the card yesterday at Gulfstream Park. All right, Jonathan Hardoon is going to be standing by with his uh, selections and for the big races as well. And then, of course, we got Rich Eng. He'll be along with a, a selection from Santa Anita and uh, some basketball uh, selections today. John Linda will give us an update on what's going on in Southern California and at Santa Anita. And, of course, Jerry Jackowitz will be along. No aqueduct picks today. Why? Well, if you were with us yesterday, you know that they're canceling racing today at Aqueduct. Big move when they cancel racing at Aqueduct. But they say that it is pouring rain right there in New York. And uh, as a result of that and the high winds additionally, They decided to cancel the races today at Aqueduct. Today's racing card that was drawn a couple of days ago will be shifted to tomorrow, Sunday. That front is going to be passing through uh, the Northeast in quick order. So uh, Jerry J will be with us. We'll get maybe uh, two picks out of him for Santa Anita. Anyhow, just starting on this Saturday show, coming to you live and direct from the South Point Studios. And right behind me, all that action in the sports book. Oh, it's going to get hot and heavier as we move into day three of the first weekend of March Madness. We'll be right back. Don't go away. 
South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. From the South Point studio. The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yeah. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. A real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look at the clock? I'm... Ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines, live at noon every weekday. Back on a busy Saturday here in uh, the South Point uh, race book and sports book and all that. Got to remind you again, too, folks, they're having March Mayhem Madness here at the South Point. The place, if you think that the uh, race book is going to be full, don't worry about it. 2,000 seats upstairs in the exhibit hall, 20-foot big TV screens for all of the basketball action, and it's all free, including the parking. Just come on out and enjoy 10 betting windows, uh, six uh, you know tracks, etc. It's just going to be great. And, of course, that's uh, today and tomorrow as well up in the uh, big uh, ballroom upstairs. It's going to be a lot of fun. This place was jam rocking and rolling for the last two days. I can tell you that, and they're already starting to line up outside. Another quick uh, note of fierceness. You remember, he's the one that won the uh, Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile and was, uh, uh, got the Eclipse Award for a two-year-old, but kind of, uh, kind of tailed off as a three-year-old. They're still, we're still waiting to see him perform his best as a three-year-old this year. Well, he's going in the Florida Derby next week, the $1 million Florida Derby, and uh, he worked out. He had his final workout uh, this morning, so uh, fierceness is on his way to the Florida Derby next week. But we got a lot to do today, and as far as uh, the weather is concerned, as we say, all that muck, that crazy weather from snow up in Maine and to rain all through the New York City and East Coast area, uh, that's going to move out. And as far as uh, any other uh, weather that's uh, concerned, as far as horse racing is concerned, the West Coast, there is some clouds moving along the West Coast uh, and into California. We'll wait and see. They say there might be a 70% chance of rain at, uh, at Santa Anita. So we're going to wait and see there. But there is uh, some activity going on a little bit north of Los Angeles as far as the weather. And that's about it. So let's get started with the uh, racing menu of rec- racetracks today. We remind you, as we always do, the first uh, post times on this racing menu that we produce every day. And these will be the racetracks that, of course, will be in the race books here at the uh, South Point and uh, simulcasting all over the country. So uh, we want to remind you that on this racing menu, the first post times are Pacific. Now, we couldn't give you all the post times and all the time zones we go because we're around the world with all our, uh, you know, our simulcasting. So here's the deal. First post times are Pacific. Adjust the first post times wherever you're at, listening and watching, to where you're at from the Pacific time zone. And there's a reason for that. I don't want you to miss anything. You might miss a winner or two if you don't get the post times right. So remember, first posts are Pacific. Don't want you to miss anything like I miss mom and dad, okay? All right, here's the menu for today. We begin with Laurel Park. This is in Maryland, so the weather might be tricky down there at Laurel Park. We got uh, first post time at 9:25 at Laurel. Uh, pick six jackpot carryover today, seven thousand four hundred and sixty-six dollars at Laurel. We got ten races, two stakes races for hundred grand apiece. The eighth race will be the Beyond the Wire stakes at a mile for three-year-old fillies. Six go in there before scratches, and your big seven to five favor there is determined at driver. And then in the one hundred thousand dollar private term for three-year-olds at a mile and sixteenth, uh, nine go to the post there before any scratches. This one a little bit more wide open. As a matter of fact, the three to one morning line favorite is in Vigil, and that is uh, the, your three to one morning line favorite there. So you got ten races today at Laurel, 
And again, a first post time of 925 with a pick six jackpot carryover of $7,466. Then we move to Tampa Bay Downs. Tampa Bay Downs, of course, has nine races today. Their first post time is 930. Uh, They've got a pick six jackpot carryover at Tampa Bay Downs of $1,003. They also have a super high five carryover. This is a regular super high five, too, of uh, 296 bucks. So your first post time at Tampa Bay today for nine races, 930. Then we go to Turfway Park, a big day at Turfway Park. Now, listen, folks, usually Turfway Park is a nighttime signal uh, on the Midwest. It usually starts at 255 our time, but today is a special day. Look on the graphic. Turfway Park's first post time today for their 13 race card is set at 9:45 this morning. 9:45 is first post at Turfway, and what a day it's going to be! You got 13 stakes races there. Six of them stakes. Uh, six. I'm sorry, 13 races, six of which are stakes races, and that encompasses the all stakes pick six at 20 cents a copy. It starts out in the seventh race, the Animal Kingdom, at six furlongs for three year olds. A field of 10 before scratches. Your two to one favorite is Valentine Candy with Frankie DeTore. Frankie DeTore is at uh, Turfway Park today from Southern California. All right, the eighth race then is the Rushaway Stakes, a mile and 16th for three year olds. These are the three year olds that didn't quite make the Jeff Ruby Stakes, and it's a full field of 14 before any scratches, and it's a wide open affair. This uh, winner, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, favorite here is Tennessee. Tennessee is three to one in that one. Then the ninth race is the Latonia Stakes. This this name uh, race in named in honor of the very first name of the racetrack. Turfway Park used to be called Latonia, and so uh, the ninth race is that a mile and sixteenth. Phillies and mares, four year olds and up, a field of ten. And in this race, the uh, eight to five favorite is Botanical. Botanical, your eight to five favorite there. Then we go to the tenth race, the Kentucky Cup Classic at a mile and one eighth for four year olds and up, twelve before scratches there. And the morning line favorite in this one is lukewarm, Shirley Furious at 7-2 to is your morning line favorite there. And then we get to the Bourbonette Oaks. This race will hold 50 Kentucky Oaks points today. The Bourbonette Oaks at a mile and 16th for three-year-old fillies. If you have a field of 10 there. And Alpine Princess is 2-1 to one favorite with Louis Saez aboard. Saez is there today. And then, of course, the big feature of the day, the 12th race is the $700,000 Grade 3 Jeff Ruby Stakes. At a mile and a for three-year-olds, an overflow field of 14 before any scratches. you got a couple of uh, also eligibles in that one. 100 Kentucky Derby points up for grabs for the winner there. And it's a very competitive race, although it's on synthetic. It's a very a very competitive race. Endlessly, who is a performer, uh, that horse won the El Camino Real Derby on the synthetic racetrack. He is the 5-2 to two favorite in this one. Umberto Rispoli is uh, riding there today as well, and he is aboard that 5-2 to two lukewarm favorite. That, the Jeff Ruby Stakes, the 12th race on the card. That race will go about 3.25 p.m. Pacific time. All right, you got uh, 13 races at Turfway Park. First post time again is early at 9.45. And uh, Turfway Park, first post time with a, a carryover in the pick six jackpot, by the way, of $46,313. First post time at Turfway, 9.45. And then next up comes the fairgrounds. 12 races there. Eight stakes races at the fairgrounds. First post time is 10 a.m. Here we go with those stakes races. Second race is the Costa, Costa Rising Stakes at five and a half furlongs on the turf for three rolls and up, a field of 10. And uh, three to one favorite there is Brian's Iron Mike. The Crescent City Oaks is the third race for three roll fillies at a mile and 70 yards. The favorite in that one at five to two is Accommodate Eve, Eva, Accommodate Eva, a nine filly field there. And then we go to the seventh race, the Crescent City Derby, at a mile and one sixteenth for three year olds, a field of eight there. Five to two favorite is uh, El Dinero with uh, James Graham. The Tom Benson Memorial, scheduled at a mile and sixteenth on the turf, Phillies and Moors, four year olds and up, is the eighth race on the card, 14 and that before scratches. Wide open affair in that one. Uh, the favorite, believe it or not, at morning line at four to one is Spirit and Glory with Flavian Pratt. Flavian Pratt is at the fairgrounds today, riding there from Southern California. Ninth race is the New Orleans Classic. At a mile and one eighth for four-year-olds and up, a field of 10. And in this race, the three-to-one favorite there is uh, Touch Upon a Star. Touch Upon a Star, your three-to-one favorite in that one. 
The 10th race is the Muniz Memorial at a mile and one-eighth on the turf for four-year-olds and up, an overflow field of 13 before scratches. In that race, the morning line favorite is at four to one. I'm very busy with Irad Ortiz Jr. But listen up, folks. Jonathan Nardoon has a horse in that race that he really likes. I'm going to drag it out of him right after the menu's over. All right, the 11th race is the Fairgrounds Oaks for three-year-old fillies. 100 points for the Kentucky Oaks up for grabs there. You got a field of eight. Favorite at uh, two to one. I make that eight to five is Tarifa. Tarifa is eight to five at Flavian Pratt. The two to one close second choice is Intricate with Tyler Gaffleon. But again, Jonathan Hardoon thinks it's not a match race between these two. We'll wait and see about that. That's the eleventh race, and then of course the twelfth and final race is the big one, the one million dollar Grade Two Louisiana Derby with one hundred Kentucky Derby points up for grabs. A mile and three sixteenths. A field of 12 in this one, and the favorite at 3-1 to one resides in post-12, and that is Track Phantom with Joel Rosario aboard. Uh, but again, Jonathan does not like the favorite. Can't wait to get him started. First post time at the fairgrounds for the big racing day there is at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and I can tell you that uh, everything is fine at fairgrounds today as far as the weather. They got a regular pick six carryover as well. That's $1,588. want to remind everybody that they have a Bayou Bluegrass Pick 5, all right? And it uh, couples uh, the, the big stakes races at the fairgrounds and uh, Turfway Park, all right? The Bayou Bluegrass Pick 5 has a 15% takeout. It is a $1 base bet. It features the 9th at the fairgrounds, the 11th at Turfway, the 11th at fairgrounds, the 12th at Turfway, and the 12th at fairgrounds, all stakes races today that include both those derby prep races. First post time, fairgrounds, 10 a.m. All right, now we'll zip through for the rest of the menu. Gulfstream Park has 11 races, 70% chance of rain, they say, at Gulfstream. First post time is 10-10 at Gulfstream. Their big rainbow jackpot carryover for the pick six, about $466,435 up for grabs today at Gulfstream and their jackpot pick six. First post time for 11 races set at 10-10. We go to Oak Lawn Park. Oak Lawn Park's feature, they got a couple of feature races today. The $200,000 out of Hot Spring Stakes, eighth race of the mile for three-year-olds. Nine go to the post in this one, and the 7-5 to five favorite is Nash. And then uh, the Essex Handicap is the ninth race on the card for $600,000, a grade three at a mile and an eighth for four-year-olds and up. A field of nine in that one. The 5-2 to two favorite is first mission there. Ten races today at Oak Lawn Park and a first post time at 10-30. Sunland Park has all quarter horses today. They have nine quarter horse races at Sunland, and their first post time is 11.25. Then we get to Hawthorne Racecourse. Hawthorne Racecourse opens today in Chicago, opening day of a 78-day racing meet at Hawthorne. They have lowered the takeout on the win, place, and show to 12%. 12% takeout in the win, place, and show at Hawthorne. They have nine races on this opening day and a first post time of 12.30. Then we get to Santa Anita in Southern California. They say there's a 74% chance of rain in Southern California today. We'll wait and see. You got uh, nine races. The feature race today is the San Luis Race Stakes at a mile and a half scheduled for the turf for four-year-olds and up. Just a compact field of five, but it's competitive. Missing, missed the cut is the six to five favorite there, and uh, Planetario is at two to one there. Nine races at Santa Anita. First post time is one o'clock this afternoon. And then we go to Golden Gate. Golden Gate in Southern uh, Northern California. Eight races at Golden Gate. Pick six jackpot carry over there. $27,723. First post time at Golden Gate for eight races, 115. Charlestown has eight races. Charlestown races has a pick six jackpot carry over $56,189. First post time, 4 p.m. at uh, Charlestown races. We wrap it up in Southern California at Los Alamitos. First post time is 6.05. Eight races, four mixed breed, four quarter horses, the last race is the Quarter Horse Stakes race for $404,000. It is the Los Alamitos Oaks, 400 yards for three-year-old fillies, and it is a wide-open event there as well. That's your extended racing menu today. Boy, what a menu it is today, but we're going to be concentrating on fairgrounds and Turfway Park, and now we're going to bring in Jonathan Hardoon. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How are you? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, my, I could understand. My niece coerced <laughs> me to go to see Bruce Springsteen last night. Oh, good. And, and I she, hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I, he, he was, it was a fabulous show. It took 20 years for him to come back to Las Vegas. The last time I saw him, 
I was also with my niece. So there you have okay. It. So every twenty every twenty years. Every twenty years. Yeah, every twenty years. That's it. There, that's it right there. <laughs> Anyhow, um uh, a lot of great racing today, uh, of course, at the fairgrounds and Turfway Park. Looks like we have escaped the bad weather. It seems like it moved through now. I know New York's getting it now. And maybe even uh, Southern California and Gulfstream may have a, a drizzle or two. But right now, as far as Turfway and fairgrounds is concerned, all systems are go. Where do you want to start? Well, by the way, Gulfstream, you will now see 11 races today all run on Tapita. Oh, so I'm man. interested to see how the handle deals with it. But uh, 11 races all on Tapita. All, That's on a that, first. all on that synthetic racetrack. It is a first. All races will be on the synthetic track today at Gulfstream. All right. Where do you want to go? Yeah. Well, I guess we could start with fairgrounds. And and by the way, hopefully, the the rain is certainly gone, and it looked like it was drying out. And the good news is the races that we're going to talk about are the last three races yeah. on the card. So by then, there's a good chance that the track will certainly be upgraded to fast. And, uh, you know, the horses I'm going to give out do not like slop and do not run well on wet tracks. So, uh, you yeah. know, if the rain comes back or the track is off, no plays, but again, the track should be fast by then, and uh, yeah, that's you're not, good no, news. you're not going to use the excuse for that because it's going to be fast. Everything's going to be firm. You'll be fa great. Where are we going first? I want. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Why, right. Now you gave me a little tease that in the Munoz Memorial, the tenth race on the card, you said you'd really like the horse in that race. So let's start with that one. Okay, well, I like the number three horse in there, Ralph, Webb Slinger. Uh, this is a four-year-old from the Mark Cassie barn. He's on the improve. He's getting better with each start. He likes some give in the turf. And what I really like about him is that today he's first-time Flavian Pratt. And I think Pratt's going to fit this horse like a glove, like he fits most horses he rides. But this is a tough horse to ride, and yeah. uh, he comes from behind. And I think Pratt is going to give him a great ride. He's listed at 9-2 to two on the morning line. And I really like number three, Webb Slinger, to win today's 10th and co-featured, or one of the featured yeah. races on that card. All right, 10th race to three, Webb Slinger. That's your pick in the 10th. Uh, Fairgrounds Oaks, we went over that yesterday. I'll re re reiterate your thoughts. Uh, e even though on the morning line it looks like a two-filly race, a, a show a showdown between Tarifa and, and Intricate, you like number one, VV's Dream. And again, why? Because Vivi's Dream's only bad two races on any uh, out of her six races she's run have both been her last two races, and both of those races will run over sloppy tracks. Her fast track races, especially as a two year old, they're good enough to beat this field. She went off three to one against the same two horses last time out. Today she's listed at eight to one on the morning line. A lot of people look at what you did last time out and bet off of that, and that's the wrong way to play if you're ever looking for value. Uh -huh. Horses have legitimate excuses, and I think Vivi's dream certainly uh, eligible to make a big forward move today on a fast track. She's also breaking from the inside, so that's an edge. Eight to one on the morning line, ridiculous price. I like number one, Vivi's dream. Well, if to it's upset and win the 11. If it's anything like your other picks, it'll be bet down, but never nevertheless... Numero uno, we want to be numero uno at the wire, the one horse in the 11th race. And then the 12th race is the Louisiana Derby and the favorite track phantom stuck out there in post 12. Yeah, the one horse is going to scratch. I heard Triple Express, so I think he's opting for the Jeff Ruby. So he gets to move in a post. But I really like the number seven horse in here, Anna Marie. This is a three-year-old cult who also ran horrible last time out at fairgrounds. However, that was over that same sloppy track. Horses either liked it or didn't. I'm willing to excuse the bad race. His races as a two-year-old, all good enough to win here. Eight to one on the morning line. Number seven, Anna Marie, upsets and wins today's uh, Louisiana Derby. And that is one of your official picks on the show in the 12th place, number seven, Anna Marie. Uh, the uh, triple espresso uh, goes in the Jeff Ruby. There's another horse that was cross-entered. A gate road is also entered in the Jeff Ruby, but we don't have a late scratch on where he's going yet, right? No, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did go in in uh, the, the Jeff Ruby because that's Tapita, and basically most of his races have been run on the turf with the exception of his last race uh, when he ran, ran in the Tampa Bay Derby. So mm -hmm. chances are he'll probably opt for the Jeff Ruby. All right, and we will do that. And as long as we're talking about the Jeff Ruby, how do you see that race? Well, that's a hard race, Ralph. You know, yeah. again, you have nine horses that have never been on it uh 
Uh, I like three horses in there. Agate Road, if he decides to go. The 10 horse, Endlessly, who's five to two. You don't need him. But the interesting price horse may be the three horse, Lucky Jeremy. Uh, Gerardo Corrales aboard for Bill Morey. This horse is trying synthetic for the first time. I'm taking a shot with him because he's fast and he's a price. But again, I avoid those races, especially when you have so many unknowns in a race. All right. Well, you like uh, the three lucky Jeremy uh, because of the uh, uh, dynamic of uh, being on the synthetic racetrack there. Lucky Jeremy is eight to one on the morning line. And uh, as you say, Agate Road might uh, it might be in that race. We'll wait and see where he lands. But I got to tell you one thing. I would uh, I'm going to use your horse, but I'm going to put the uh, seven Woodcourt in there as uh, as a horse to use in the exactus in that race. He's also at eight to one there at Turfway, the Jeff Ruby. And uh, I won't even ask you about the bourbon at Oaks. I kind of figure that these three, three-year-old fillies, uh, if, you had a, you had, if you had a good three-year-old filly, I think it'd be uh, racing at uh, the fairgrounds. But nevertheless, uh, Alpine Princess will be the two-to-one favorite in that one, Louis Sayez. Right. But, but by the way, Ralph, in that, in that race, that the race you were just talking about, the bourbon, that there, there is an interesting horse there, number ah. 10, Everland, who's 10-to-one 10, 10, 10 on the morning line. This horse's last two races, both of them, we're at uh, Turfway Park, and guess what? They were the best two races of her career. The only problem is the post, but she's 10 to 1, and if she overcomes the post, she may be worth somewhat of a play. I may even make a bet on that horse. There you go. You see how I see how I snuck Jonathan to give us a play in that race, folks, for you? Yeah, I did. The Bourbonette Oaks. Okay, now we got your play in there, the 10 Everland, the 10 Everland in the race. I'm going to try to get as much out of you handicappers as I can. You know that. Anything else uh, to give to us before we uh, let you go? I like the horse at Oaklawn in the 10th and final. It's a maiden event, but guess what? It's a full field of 12, and I like uh, the number six horse in there, Street Painter, a four-year-old filly from the Al Cates barn. Harry Hernandez aboard to ride. She's uh, she's listed a four-to-one on the morning line. Graduation day today for number six, Street Painter. 10th and final out at Oak Lawn Park. All right, the last race at Oak Lawn Park, 10th race, number six, Street Painter, uh, the sixth horse in the 10th race at Oak Lawn. Jonathan, I know you've done a whole bunch of great work uh, as far as your sheets are concerned. You have four of them today. Tell them where they are. We have Oak Lawn, Fairgrounds filling in for Aqueduct since they canceled, Gulfstream, the Tapita uh, Marathon, <laughs> 10, 11 races all on Tapita, yeah. and, of course, San Anita. All right. Well, we thank you very much uh, for all your hard work, Jonathan. You know what? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give me tomorrow off. Take tomorrow off. Okay. But, but you got to give us picks. You got to send me picks now, okay? I will. I will be sending them in. Thank you, Ralph. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Jonathan. Stay Nardin. safe and be well. All right. You got him, my man. Uh, Jonathan, by the way, folks, informed me that uh, he has a, a special occasion that he's going to tomorrow morning uh, when the show is on. But he's going to give us horses. All right. We're all set for that. Hey, we got some uh, basketball to think about. We'll do that next with Rich Ang and maybe get a horse out of him, too. Don't go away. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, specially adapted adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at t2t.org. That's T, the number two, t.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered.
All righty, back on race day, Las Vegas, as we get closer and closer to tip off, the book is starting to fill up behind us and the exhibit hall as well. Don't forget, plenty of room here. Come on down and enjoy March Madness, first weekend here at the uh, South Point. Now we're going to go to Rich Ang to give us a little bit of mayhem in this March Madness. Richie, uh, some uh, some interesting uh, games yesterday, my man. Hey, good morning, Ralph. Good morning to all the listeners. Uh, yeah, and three games in particular stuck out to me. One was a, a huge upset. Yale yeah. knocks off number four Auburn. Wow. And a lot of people had Auburn moving pretty far in their brackets, and some even picked them to win the national championship. Yeah. So Auburn's out. Yale is in. And then the two number 12 seeds played like they were much better than their opponents. Uh, James Madison and Grand Central took care of business. They were the better teams in their game. So it really was it was an upset in the point spread. It wasn't an upset if you watch the games, the better team won. Yeah, no question about that. That's for sure. You a split to one win and one loss yesterday. But man, two games in college basketball that had uh, totals going over 200 points. That is unusual. Yes, uh, the scoring is way up. The three-point shooting is tremendous. Uh, the game that uh, I finally broke the ice is uh, Colorado beating Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the best games that you're ever going to see as far as the tournament back and forth. I mean, uh, they those teams were dead equal, but uh, the last shot was made by Colorado. Uh, the kid Simpson made the baseline jumper. Yep, one of those buzzer beaters, that's for sure. And we've got, uh, well, we got now we're getting down to the uh, the uh, kind of a nitty-gritty. You know, there's eight games on the slate today, and those eight teams will move into next weekend. Uh, and uh, how do you see, what do we have uh, for today's uh, competition? Yeah, the uh, 64 teams are down to 32, and wow. after Sunday it's going to be down to the Sweet 16, Ralph. The two games I like today that I'll share and I have in my pocket. First game is Michigan State playing North Carolina. I really like Michigan State plus the four. In fact, if you probably wait just a little bit, it's probably going to go to four and a half because North Carolina is taking most of the betting, yeah. most of the handle. But Michigan State, this is they schedule the hardest pre-conference schedule of any team in the country for moments like this, Ralph. They are battle-tested. Uh, their strength and schedule is sky high. Uh, Tom Izzo, obviously, uh, fantastic coach. Michigan State plus four yeah. to pull off an upset. you got to respect Izzo. Every year he starts out with his teams and, and, and puts them in a spot to get uh, tournament tough, that's for sure, and they seem to get better as the year goes on. So Michigan State uh, to uh, cover against North Carolina or maybe win right outright. Uh, and you had another one? Yeah, let's go with the Washington State-Iowa State game. If you watch the Iowa State uh, play in particular, mm -hmm. they play what I call a python defense. They just strangle you to death and take all the oxygen out of your body. Uh -huh. uh, they are the toughest test that UConn's probably going to face uh, in that region. Uh, Iowa State minus six and a half. I think they put the clamps on Washington State and win going away. All right, now that uh, that dropped a little, so there is money coming in on Washington State. It opened at seven and a half. You say it's at six now. Six and a half. Six and a half. Uh, now. Okay, point, dropped yeah. the point. All right, so uh, bet number seven eighty nine, Michigan State. Bet number eight hundred, that's Iowa State. And uh, Michigan State's game tips off at two thirty, and Iowa State's game tips off at three ten. All on uh, the various CBS networks on your cable system. All right, uh, you got a horse for me. Yeah, real quick, let's go to race seven. It's the stakes race, the San... Uh, San Luis Rey. Uh, yeah, San Luis Rey. And it's only a five-horse field, but I'm going to single the five Planetario. This horse had a little trouble at a key juncture of the race, finished well, two to one with Hector Berrios. Let's go with the five Planetario, race seven. All right, in the San Luis Rey, you got the five Planetario. The five is your selection in the seventh race today at San Anita. Don't forget, folks, he's doing a lot of college uh, hoops for us and as well as he did with the football season. But he does have a sheet every day for Southern California racing, as he does today. The, the uh, San, handicapping sheet for Santa Anita is available at the RacedayLasVegas.com websites. Hey, thanks a lot, Richie. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, thanks, Ralph. Good luck, everybody. All right. When we come back, uh, you know our closing act, John and Jerry. So uh, got to remind everybody here we're open for business, and I'm going to tell you it's going to get crazier as the day moves on. Can't wait to get those racing cards started at Turfway and Fairgrounds. We'll be right back to close it up right after this. 
is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. The Race Day Las Vegas Show, the only exclusive daily local media racing information source in Las Vegas. All right, now we're going to get to uh, John Lendo standing by in Southern California. John, don't tell me. 70% chance of rain there today? Uh, We just got a text. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we got a text from the racing office. They're going to close the main track at 830, so they're going to stop training early this morning. They're Uh anticipating some rain coming in in late morning, but uh, I don't think it's supposed to rain hard. Right now, that's all I know, Ralph. We're we're on the turf. The main track is fast. They're, They're training right now. Uh, but they're gearing up just in case. Well, that's amazing that uh, you know that much from from that place. That's for <laughs> sure. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. I got to tell you, in the first two months in racing in uh, California tracks, and mostly, of course, in Southern California, uh, the overall uh, handle has been down 4%, man. Well, it's not surprising with the percentage of favorites that have been winning and the size of the fields. Yeah. You know, it, it hasn't been the optimum product, so they're doing the best they can with what we've got out here. And the weather, obviously, has had something to do with that as well. Well, it seems like uh, Bob Baffert is going to try to, uh, you know, uh, tank a couple of hundred pointers there because he's got uh, horses running in both the uh, uh, the uh, Santa Anita Derby and uh, the Arkansas Derby. And, you know, when he sends out horses, they're ready to rock and roll. So we'll wait and see how that dimension, how that plays out a little bit next weekend, that's for sure. But for today, we got the... Uh, the uh, Louisiana Derby and, of course, the Jeff Ruby Stakes. I know that you kind of peruse around taking a look at some of the other tracks, although you have a full jo- uh, Lendo report right now today here in the race book at the South Point, free of charge and exclusively here. But, John, did you take a look at any and uh, any opinion? Well, the Louisiana Derby, uh, track phantom, obviously the horse to beat. But I think John Hardoon's on the right horse as far as horses to bet, and that's number seven, Honor Marie, who was prepping in the last race, the Risen Star, and uh, longer distance, a uh, race under, under the horse's belt. This horse is going to move forward today. We'll find out if he's good enough, but 8-1 to one is a fair number on, on Honor Marie and the Louisiana Derby. Any thought about uh, the Ruby? Again, so so little about uh, the synthetic track for the others. We know endlessly from California, and Michael McCarthy, the yeah. trainer, went up to Golden Gate, won the El Camino Real Derby. He'll run all day. He'll handle the synthetic. He's 5-2 to two in the program. There's, there's no imagination there but I expect him to run his race today. All right. Now we're back at Santa Anita in Southern California. And of course, as I say before, I want to remind everybody, John Lindo's comprehensive Lindo report covering all the races today with selections, the selected uh, suggested late pick four in the late pick four and the coast to coast pick five that covers the third race at Santa Anita, the ninth at Gulfstream, the fifth at Santa Anita, the 11th at Gulfstream and the eighth at Santa Anita, the dollar, Coast to Coast Pick 5, you have a suggestion there as well. It's all on one sheet, the comprehensive sheet, and that is the Linda Report, available only in one place in this gaming capital. It's right here at the South Point Racebook, and it's free of charge to you, complimentary here, because they love horse players. It's really that simple. All right, uh, John, what are we doing at San Anita today? Let's go right to the opener, 1 o'clock first post time. In the first race at San Anita, I thought number six, Get Crack, and ran pretty well in the comeback off a year layoff. Finished up well, galloped out in front of the field last time. Same level as today with that race under his belt, two works out of the race. I think he'll move forward today. And at four to one on the morning line, he's the horse with the most upside in the race. So number six, get cracking. Race number one, Santa Anita. All right. First race post time is one o'clock Pacific time. John's going to give us a singleton to start out the early pick five in the first race. Number six, get cracking. And we will do just that. Thanks a lot, uh, John. And of course, uh, we will talk to you tomorrow. You got it, Ralph. Good luck today. All right, you got it, my man. Now we're going to go to Jerry Jackowitz standing by. Jerry, I can't read your T-shirt, man. What does it say? Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I saw a good rock and roller last night. I went to see uh, Bruce Springsteen. Great. Oh. Yeah. 
The boss. The Very boss, nice. Baby. The boss. The boss. Yeah. That's right. Very nice. Um, I saw him once. Um, saw him over at the. Um, it was the Grand Garden over yeah, at the, the MGM Garden, twenty years ago? I was there too, but it took me. 20 I thought years. I knew. I yeah. thought I saw you. Did you see me over here? You know, really funny because the seats that we had, uh, we had Brad Garrett sitting in front of us, right in front of us. Uh -huh. Yeah, watching the. Uh, anyhow, I digress. Hey, uh, did you take a look at all at uh, either the Louisiana Derby or the Jeff Ruby, or or you're just gonna watch them and? Uh, well, I wasn't able to because last night while you were at. Um... Bruce Springsteen, I was up and watching Dancing with the Stars. Oh, I see. So we got home a little late, and I didn't get a chance to last night or even this morning. So uh, not a problem. I'm going to have to pass, but I'll give you an opinion tomorrow. Okay. Well, we'll take uh, now the Aqueduct. Uh, you know, your your power page there is now a souvenir because they have it canceled today. So we're going. I'm going to squeeze two. Well, th that I didn't actually put it up, but tomorrow's today's. Uh, Aqueduct will be tomorrow's yeah, aqueduct. Yeah, they're going to switch over and put this uh, card uh, tomorrow. So we'll right. wait and get that tomorrow. Then it's it's a it's a a uh, temporary souvenir. Let's put it that way. Um, so I'm going to drag two picks. So out I only of have you. one play for you today, Ralph. You only? Yeah, no, I'm going to drag two out of you. I don't know. Well, well, let's let's see what we can do about the first play. Okay. Let's go to race number three. All righty. Um. Number four, Derek. I'm not even sure how you say this, Derek o Dandy. Yeah, Derek. I, I believe I gave Matt on the show um, on April, on March eighth, and he ran second. And I'm giving him out today again. He was on the dirt that day. Today he's on the turf, which I think he's a little better on the turf. Um, he sure likes to run second, but this group isn't very good. None of them really want to win. So I think this is a, a really good a good play for him today. He's just really fit and a fit horse. On the improvement path is always worth a bet, and usually they get paid. They they go off at higher odds than you think they should. So I'll take a shot with number four, Derek O'Dandy. Play the four over the five, six, seven, eight. Do my reverses four, five, seven, eight, eight over the four. Is a perfect pop out key and, and featured play at three to one. All right. Um, so, so I like him quite a bit in the third race today. Okay, good. In the third race, then you like the four, and the link-ups are five, six, seven, eight, and reverse. The four is the key. Don't forget, always uh, with the key horse, make your win bet first, and then do your exotics to kind of uh, make some money on the side with that as well. I'm dragging it out of you. I need one more. Okay. I'm going to go to the eighth race. So you're going to have to you're going to have to figure out your uh, your key, your uh, turns. You're going to have to pick out okay. some of your. Uh, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll, your I'll preferred pay horses. In fact, Ralph, maybe you're going to do it for sure, us. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'll try but it. But I'm going to go to, uh, let me just get the number. Number six, Midnight Mammoth, the 12 to 1. Craig DeLossi for uh, Tyler Bay's up. We're on the dirt here, so we, we're not going to worry. By the way, Derek O'Dandy, I like him on turf and dirt. I don't care what the surface is. Okay. It rains and they come off. Uh, duly okay. noted, yes. Go. But here I do care, but it's a dirt race, and I'll take him on even fast. I'll even go to a wet track. We don't know how they like it. So, But I like this horse, Midnight Mammoth. It's a V-horse on the power page. Um, showed a lot of speed early in that last race and faded, and I sometimes like a nice speed and fade play. If he can break free or settle down early, he might be very tough today. So I'll give um, a 12-1 to 1, a real good chance. The six was perfect win place bet and uh, certainly uh, okay to do walls with. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna link them up, uh, give you some link-ups on the show. They will be numbers two, Clouseau, the three, Cowboy Mike, the four, the big Wham, and the five, Yellow Brick. So you got the six over two, three, four, five, and reverse, but uh, Jerry – as the six and that nice juicy twelve to one, you got to make sure you get a win place on that. That's for sure. And any other horse you like in the race, folks, hook it up with him. If this horse finishes first or second, you're going to get uh, a nice little payoff there. Eighth race, you like the six. All right. I want to remind everybody that Jerry J's Power Pages for Santa Anita available right now at JerryJ'sPowerPage.com. And I also want to remind everybody that uh, if you you know today's sheet will be available tomorrow for tomorrow's racing because. That's where they're going to transfer it to. A lot happening uh, in racing today. The big racing car at the fairgrounds and at Turfway Park. You got a coast to coast pick five. You got a Bayou Bluegrass uh, pick five. And you got all the great uh, basketball action going on behind us. What a day to be here at the South Point. Come on down and enjoy the races and, and sports. 
and some of the great restaurants and food they have here as well. So until tomorrow morning, we want to wish you, uh, you know, don't forget to join us here at the South Point Studios uh, streaming at YouTube. Give it a try tomorrow morning, that's for sure. Hey, Jerry, you have one more thing to say. Have a great race day, everybody.